Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the Information Technology Department and specifically the role of this department as well as the personnel, the people that work there. What is the role and we'll speak briefly about the internal control. So the IT department or Information Technology within any organization is a supporting division. Supporting means it does not get involved in the production of the product that we are producing, whatever we are producing or selling. It supports the people. That's why it's a supporting division within the company, not a production department. The supporting division that's responsible for managing and maintaining the, the company's computer systems and network. Now, computer system means many things. Software, hardware, network, storage, cloud, so on and so forth. The IT department typically include a, ver a variety of professionals with different skills and roles. In some organization, and this is what we're going to be assuming, the IT department could be a huge, large department, depending on the size of the company. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at a sample structure. Now, this is a sample structure. It doesn't have to be this way. But basically, we have the CEO is on the top of the chart, obviously. The CEO is in charge of the whole operation, chief operation officer, chief, chief executive officer. Right underneath it, we could have something called CIO or CTO, depending on the company, chief information officer or chief technology officer. Now, underneath this individual, again, we're discussing large multi uh, multinational organization. They will have three areas. One is called application development system administration or technical services and computer operation now why would we have those three areas separately well because for the purpose of internal control people in these areas should stay separate for internal control purposes so they don't the, you, you would not have a breach of data and the system would run smoothly now within the application development we're going to look at the people the titles the typical titles that you could see for example under the application development we could see that we could have a system analyst and a software developer and we're going to discuss each area and the role of the people within each area now under the system administration we could have many sub areas we could have network manager or network administrator web administrator IT security administrator or administrators could be more than one, IT help desk and data administrator. For the purpose of this session, I am not going to discuss the data administrator role because I'm going to have several sessions about data and we'll discuss the data administrator role in these sessions. Then we're going to have computer operation and under computer operation, we're going to have data entry is a separate department and data control another separate department. The reason I have them so the picture will fit better and we'll have a file librarian. Could we have more different personnel? Yes, but those are the typical ones. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Now, for the purpose of segregation of duties, we want to keep those separate. And the segregation of duties ensure that the right people have access to the right resources and for the right reasons. For example, you don't want the programmer, for example, the software and the software developer, the person that we're going to talk about this in a moment that writes the program, be able to use the system because if they can write the program and use the system, they know exactly how the system work and they could have back doors to do malicious things. It also minimizes the risk of data breaches or unauthorized access to sensitive information. And each group is able to focus on exactly what their responsibilities and their task is, which will lead to a more efficient and effective IT departments. Now, starting on the next slides, I'm going to go over each category, then the people within this category and speak about the role. Starting with application development, this is where things are born. It means created application or developing the application. Now, later on, we're going to have another session that talks about when we purchase an application, we can develop an application like a new software, a new web application, or we can purchase it. Either or, we're going to have a separate department for that purpose. 
So the application development is a functional area within the IT that's responsible for creating, testing, and maintaining software system. Well, they include developing of new applications, and those applications could be web application, mobile application, for example, cell phone application, desktop, laptop, whatever, mobile, as well as maintenance and enhancement of the existing ones. So the goal of this area is to create software that meets the need of the organization and its customers. And that's what we meant by saying IT is a supporting function. It means everything that we do in IT. If you remember when you spoke about COVID, we said COVID meet the organization need. Well, all IT people, everything that has to do with IT, the reason we, we have IT is to do what? Is to help us meet our need, the company need and its customers. So in this application development area, we could have what's called system analyst. Now you need to know what is the overall area and what is the role, what's the main role of the system analyst? What are the system analysts? So the system analyst bridge the gap between business requirement and IT solution. And the business analyst is the person that is that can speak the tech language and can speak the business language. So the system analyst is a person in between those two groups. He or she can communicate the business need to tech people and vice versa and let tech people know, uh, let business people know what tech people are capable or not capable of. So think of the system analyst as an intermediary because they know both the tech language as well as the business language. System analysts help to understand the needs of the business and translate them into technical requirement. How do they do that? Through charts, through narrative, so on and so forth, through meetings, basically. It works to ensure that the new system follows the organization policies and procedure and that they meet the requirement of regulatory bodies. Because the system analyst is the first person basically draw the map of the new system that we're creating. Now, once we draw the map, once we have the blueprint, we're going to give the blueprint to the programmer. They are called software developer, application developer, application programmers. You could see different terminology for them, but the point is, what do they do? They work under the direction of the system analyst and they use programming language to create what we need to create. So they use various programming language, C, C++, Java, whatever, and technologies, compilers, to create software application that meets the need of the organization. And usually they do this basically in a sandbox. It means not in a live situation. So initially the work done in a non-life environment. So this is the first area. So basically what, what I did in, on this slide, I covered this part here. The people, the, the area, and the people who works in this department. The second area is systems administration and programming. Well, in this, func in this area, it's a functional area as well within the IT department that's responsible for managing and maintaining the organization computer system and network. Remember, first we create the software, we create the systems, now the system administrator and programming, they maintain it. Well, this includes installing, configuring, maintaining servers, storage devices, network equipment, so on and so forth, as well as managing the organization infrastructure. The goal is to do what? Make sure the organizational computer system is running efficiently, efficiently and effectively to meet the business need. That's the IT part of the IT department. So we're going to look now at the people, the role of the people who are inside this, this area, this sphere. They are also known as sys, sys admins. They are professionals who are responsible for the day-to-day -day operation and maintenance of the organization computer system and network. So at work, if you need to have access or you need to install something, a new software, you, your network is not connecting properly, you would contact the system administrator. And we have many of them. We could have a network manager or network administrator. Usually they give you access to the network. Those professionals are responsible for the design, implementation, and maintenance of the computer network. They manage also the network documentation, provide technical support and guidance to users about the network, keep up to date with new technologies and best practices for network management. So on the CPA exam or on any exam, professional exam, remember, look for the word network or something that makes sense to this, to this position. Web administrators, well, guess what? They maintain the web-based system and application. You could have a web base that's mobile. You could have a web base that's desktop. So they maintain this. Also, they can figure and troubleshoot any web server's application if there's any problem. They manage the web content, whatever we need to delete, add some stuff of, on the website. Manage web analytics because we need to know how many visitors we have. They keep track of that. That's very important for our data analytics later. 
manage web accessibility who can access the website internally and do the updates also manage web related software if there's any software that's on the web well they're responsible for that as well as making sure they're keeping track of documentation and of course they have to keep up to date with technologies and best practices so this is again those are individuals one two could be more than one one so on and so forth Within system administrator, we could have IT security administrators, well, or administrator, could, we could have more than one, obviously, from the from the name of it. It's for the it's for the purpose of protecting the organization IT system from a range of threats, such as hacking, viruses, and data breaches. Now, if you don't know what these are, we're going to learn about them, but think about somebody trying to harm you. IT security is a critical function, because think about it. Someone can hack you, bring your system down, or takes your data, well, no, no need to function anymore as a company because you're in trouble. So IT security management is a, is a critical function that's essential to the overall security as well as the well-being of the organization. They also plan, implement, and oversee security measures. Hopefully they are preventive. They want to stay, th those, those groups, those individuals, they really want to stay up to date. They need to identify and assess potential IT securities before they arises and develop and implement IT security policies and procedure to monitor and manage that risk, bring that risk to a to an acceptable level, and hopefully we can eliminate that risk. Help desk personnel, and I'm pretty sure if you're listening to me, you dealt with uh, IT help desk. They provide technical support to users people who are using the computer system. They act as the first point of contact for users who experience technical problems, who have questions about the IT system and equipment. Now, their job is to respond and hopefully they can solve the problem through a phone, email, or now a chat or in person. Like I know in college, they come to your office sometime to fix whatever you need to fix, to fix your printer, fix your network, it's not the connecting properly, so on and so forth. They keep track and documentation about your inquiries and issues because they can use this information to see how they can improve the system. And any issues that they cannot solve, they can escalate to a higher level IT staff as needed. Again, they have to keep up to date with technologies and best practices for IT support. So this is the second area of system administrators. And I told you I'm not going to discuss data administrator because I'll be discussing that group later on when we speak about the data. Now we could have computer operation. Computer operation is also a functional area within IT, and this functional area is becoming less and less relevant, and you will see why. That's responsible for day-to-day -day management and maintenance of the organization, computer, and equipment. And here you could have a data entry cl clerk, which is basically somebody who's entering information into the system. And you know that's that's not happening these days. Most of the entries are computerized through customers input them or scanning, or some sort of a computerized system. They're responsible for accurately and efficiently entering data, like customer information, inventory, financial transaction, and other type of record in the organization's computer system. So they need to have a good understanding of the computer system, the software, knowledge of the business, and any, any relevant data protection laws. For example, they have to protect the data for legal or regulatory purposes. They need to be familiar what they need to do once they input the data, how, like for example, the credit card information, like let's assume you still fill out your credit card application and you mail it. Well, after they input this information, they have to destroy it. Also computer operators, we could have a data con control clerk. And what are they responsible for? They're responsible for the accuracy and integrity of the organizational data, making sure it's good, monitoring and verifying the accuracy of data entered into the organization. So think of it as a control group for the data entry. But again, those roles are going away. Now we have more people who work on this level, bring taking data out and converting the data into for analytical purposes. We have those, but not data entry anymore. It's mostly like taking the data out and cleaning the data. So making sure they're maintaining updated data record as well. They could also audit and monitor uh, uh, data for errors and inconsistencies. Again, they are a control, data control group, and update and maintain the data record as required. We could also have a file librarian. And a file librarian, think about the library where you have the books there, and if you need a book, if you need to check out a book, you'll go to the librarian and you'll ask them to check it out. They're responsible for maintaining and organizing large collection of files and records. Those here we, we're talking about even physical records sometimes. They include creating and updating file system, classifying, cataloging files, ensuring the security and accessibility of the files. That's their main job. You want to check out a file, you'll talk to the file librarian. 
responsible for archiving and preserving historical files and update them as necessary. So this is the third area, computer operation. Now bear in mind, all these areas, whether we're talking about computer operation, whether we are talking about system analyst, whether we are talking about system administrator, all these groups involve people. So in every role, if you notice, we spoke about people. So all these, pe all these positions are run by actual people. So the best internal control for a company is to do what? Is to make sure they have the proper control for their individuals, for the people who are hiring. So what we do, we're gonna talk about something called personnel policies and procedures. These are guidelines and rules set by the organization to govern the behavior and action of the employees. These policies and procedures cover a, a wide range of topics. But specifically, when we're dealing with people, we have to be making sure a few things. One is the recruitment and hiring. That's the first step in, in bringing an employee on board. So what do you have to do? When you bring an employee, interview them first. A formal interview, maybe multiple interviews. Interview with several people. Background checks, education, criminal, credit as long as it's legal in your state to do those. Place the person in the right position. Don't put them in a position where they're overqualified or in position they're underqualified. If they're overqualified, they will eventually leave. If they're underqualified, they will do a lousy job. And you're gonna be spending money and training, so you wanna make sure they are, they are placed in the right place. Now, once you hire the individual and they're working for you, you have to look at the second step in, in personnel and policies proce procedures, and that's performance evaluation and promotion. You gotta give them feedback about their overall performance, strength as well as their weaknesses and provide guidance for improvement. Reward them. Also, we're gonna have to face disciplinary action and sometime termination. In terms of disciplinary action, you should apply the same rules to all individuals that work at the company. And if there's any involuntary termination means the person is fired, you have to disable whether voluntary or involuntary, you have to disable access privilege once that individual leaves, take out their username, disable that, their key card, any access that's logical, el electronically, or physical with keys, cards, so on and so forth. Because if you don't have a good personnel policies, it doesn't matter how good is your technology, the people can override anything. What should you do now? Whether you are studying for the CPA exam, CMA exam, CISA or accounting information system, go to Farhat lectures and work MCQs that's going to help you consolidate your knowledge so you are ready to whatever you need this information for. Good luck, everyone. Study safe, uh, study hard, stay safe, and of course, invest in yourself and invest in your career. Good luck.